As that quarantine effort in China continues here at home, researchers are working furiously to learn more about this deadly virus and how a vaccine for the coronavirus works. Our Dr. Jen Ashton went to the National Institutes of Health laboratory to see where that work stands. So this is where you're actually working on the coronavirus vaccine. Right. Um, for when you hear about the, the sequence of the vaccine being made public, right. that's like a recipe, right? right. For scientists, right. You know, the sequence to... is the genetic code of the virus. And if you have the entire genetic code, in there are genes that code for different parts of the virus. There's one very important part of the virus called the spike protein. That's this. It's right here, this guy here, the spike protein. So this is the coronavirus. They call it corona because it's like a crown, crown. with these spikes. So this mm -hmm. is one of them here. Mm -hmm. This is the blown up one. Mm -hmm. So one of the critical issue is how do you stabilize this protein to make it a good immunogen to mm -hmm. give to a person? They've done that. And now the next thing is get it into people. It's straightforward. Okay. When you make a vaccine, you want to induce an antibody that helps to interfere with a virus or any other pathogen from getting to its ultimate target. The ultimate target of the coronavirus is the respiratory tract, your lung. The whole goal of the vaccine is that when this coronavirus comes through your nose, your mouth, into your lung, to prevent it from hitting the target that will you infect you, you just so you want block to block it. So you want to block the interaction between that. this spike protein and the receptor on your lung. What do you think the chances are that this novel coronavirus outbreak could become a pandemic? If we start to see in multiple countries that there's sustained transmission, particularly if it gets into countries in the developing world, like in Africa, where some of those countries don't have the healthcare system to do identification, isolation, and uh, contact tracing, then the likelihood of it becoming a global pandemic is much bigger. Right now, we're at that critical stage that we don't know if it's gonna go there, but it is certainly feasible that it will. The thing that would, would, would raise it to another level of concern is if we started to see sustained transmission from person to person in multiple places. If all of a sudden we started to see in Chicago and New York and California and Arizona that there's sustained transmission, then that you ratchet that up to a, a level of concern. Fortunately, we've not seen that. So many scientists, so many public health officials say you prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Right. That's the way we... Well, that's we... exactly what we're doing. And I think that gets, that's a good question. Uh, because that gets into sometimes the confusion where health officials say that the risk for America is still low. Right. And yet we take this really, really very seriously. Those are not incompatible right. because you prepare for the very, very, very worst, but obviously you hope for the best. Yeah. Okay, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. We have Dr. Jen Ashton now. She's joining us live in the studio. Dr. Fauci, okay, give us give us your take on Dr. Fauci and yeah. what was happening here. I mean, he's a legend, Tom. He is the top infectious disease doctor in the country. He has decades of experience mobilizing not only the U.S. response, but global responses to Ebola, Zika, SARS, MERS. He has seen it all. Um, I think what really stood out to me is that right now, and, you know, we're in constant in touch with the CDC in terms of in terms of their briefing yeah. and right now the most concerning thing Tom is that they have not yet invited CDC into China to independently assess the data the disease response that's a problem so until the China invites the CDC in, we're getting this information kind of removed from a distance and that makes the CDC a little uneasy that's number one number two big news today and good news for the US response is that the CDC finally distributed locally about a hundred testing kits so that regional testing can occur right now all of the tests have to go to Atlanta to be tested at the CDC. So in the next couple of days, we'll start to see more regional testing become available in this country. That will expedite things um, because we are going to expect to see more cases. I want to really also emphasize, I know we like to focus on numbers. We're numbers people. Right. But whether it's 11, whether it's 12, whether it's 13, we expect those numbers to go up. 
I'm more interested in what the estimates are on the epidemiologic models coming out of China because CD Can we trust those models, though? Well, remember, there's numbers being reported from China, but then CDC and World Health Organization officials are also running models, mathematical models. They're the same type of models that we get our CDC estimates from every week, right? Those models are showing numbers exponentially higher than 25,500. Mm -hmm. So as Dr. Fauci said, we are preparing for a much worse situation. But to be clear, what's going on in China is very different from our response here in this country. Our response here has been aggressive and it's been successful. So Talk to me about the masks. I was, I was out in Los Angeles all last week. Yeah. You notice a lot of people with them just walking around the streets on the flight back. More people had them in the airplane. What's your take? Big problem. So first of all, the routine surgical masks that you're seeing people use in China and you're seeing this panicked footage there because they're unavailable for the general public. That is not the situation here in the United States. We use those surgical masks medically in hospital settings on sick people to protect healthy people around them. Dr. Fauci himself told me that the size of the coronavirus particle is so small that it can infiltrate these surgical masks. So there is no evidence that they are effective in protecting a healthy person. What is happening now, and this is very concerning, is that we're starting to get reports from my colleagues at various hospitals around the country that, you know, those stands that you see in the hospital right. with those surgical masks, if you're sick, please put on a mask. They're being removed from hospitals because people are stealing those masks. Once you see things like that, Tom, that endangers patients in the hospital, it endangers healthcare workers in the hospital, and that's a big problem. It speaks so we, to the level of fear, though, too. Absolutely, yeah. and we've said it before, in right. medicine and science, we have to go based on fact, not fear, and evidence, not emotion. Last question, there have been some reports that, that the Olympic Organization Committee is getting concerned uh, about coronavirus. It's this summer. What, what, what can you tell us? I What's mean, your take? Listen, I, I'm not on the IOC. I don't have any inside yeah. information <laughs> yeah. about, about the Olympics and planning, but I can guarantee you that they are looking at that. We don't have a glass. Uh, a, crystal glass, ball. you know, crystal yeah. ball yeah, about what's going <laughs> to happen in the future. But for sure, it will be a concern. It's this is a global health crisis right now, and we don't know what it will bring, but there is concern that if it infiltrates poor countries, that it could become a pandemic, and that will not be good for the Olympics. You have the athletes, but you also have all those tourists that oh, are going to go there, too. It's going to be a big issue. All right, Dr. Jen Ashton, thank you so Thanks much so. for breaking it down for us. We always appreciate that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.